the organizers for accepting this paper in this interesting session. I think the, the discussion after now has been really, really interesting for addressing all these things about Iron Age in the present and about identities, about specifically about the, the Celts and the use uh, in modern time of the Celts. So I'm moving on to a specific case study we are doing, uh, we are conducting around the Opidon of Fulaca in central Spain. So we are working on uh, understanding the cultural landscapes uh, in the, in the current, currently, uh, currently now. And we are trying to understand how to enhance the collaboration between local communities and archaeologists and how to understand the importance of Iron Age in the present day in this region of central Spain. So, Historical reenactments are a growing phenomenon across all Europe and the Western countries. Every year there are more and more of these festivals everywhere. They, ha they, ha they have more people involved as participants, public and organizers. In Spain there is an expansion of these events too, especially those related to the Iron Age. New historical reenactments are getting started everywhere. They attract more and more visitors, they got attention from the media, and they have a high impact on tourism and the local economy of the places where these events are celebrated. However, little attention have been, have, has been paid to the reenactments by social science, particularly among archaeologists and heritage management experts. Most of our colleagues, in fact, think historical reenactments are a sort of crime, misinformed, and um, 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 poorly informed in events in scientific terms. So most of them don't get involved and even detest them and deny their cultural value. But tourism entrepreneurs, local politicians, private companies, and also advertising agents have recognized their relevance. So they are getting involved in, uh, with their own agendas while archaeologists remain out of the picture. So in this presentation, we will reflect on historical reenactments as contemporary cultural representations. We consider these festivals as social contests where the public engage with cultural landscapes and heritage and build bottom-up historical and archaeological narratives. This context primarily serves to the publics, we need to emphasize diversity here, to have fun and party, to express and negotiate contemporary identity issues, to promote tourism and to raise business. In addition, we will briefly point out some of the issues, in our opinion, we should be aware as archaeologists regarding the nature of these festivals. Finally, we will explore the possibilities of historical reenactments for the dissemination of archaeological narratives in a more inclusive way, reflecting on multivocality, multiculturalism, and open science. To do this, we will, play we will pay attention to the Luna Celta Festival in Avila as our main case study. This festival is one of the more outstanding historical reenactments in Spain, as it has been celebrated for more than 10 years. It involves thousands of people, considering organizers, participants, and public, and it is connected to one of the more impressive and well-known Iron Age sites in the Iberian Peninsula, the Opidon of Fulaga, located in the, loca in the local municipality of Solo Sancho. Around this singular archaeological site, a research team uh, with the scholars from the Complutense University of Madrid is investigating how local communities engage with the cultural landscapes related to Iron Age Opida, and how tourism and land use policies mediate in the public perception of the acronym within those landscapes. This research is being developed in the framework of the REFIT project, uh, along with our colleagues from the European Archaeological Centre of Ibrac in France and Durham University in the UK. We have conducted an ethnographical, an ethnographical exploration of the Luna Celta Festival during the last two editions, 2016 and 17, just a couple of weeks ago, following up a broader study about the contemporary reception of the Iron Age in central Iberia in connection with the so-called Betones by the Romans, the indigenous communities who inhabited the western central plateau of Iberia at the end of the first millennium BC. The goals for this paper are to examine the potential of this festival for engaging local communities with the cultural landscapes around Uruaca Opium, to assess the role of Iron Age as a reference for the making of contemporary identities, and to explore the relations between historical reenactment festivals, archaeological research, and tourism in central Spain. Previous to research developed by one of us, Alon Pablo Alonso, of reenactment festivals in the northwest of Spain between 2010 and 2013, serve us as our starting point for this investigation. The pre-Roman past constitutes an essential reference for contemporary identities in several regions of Spain, as Manuel uh, saw us before. Uh, the Betones play an important role as a reference of prestige in Avila region. Uh, some of its inhabitants feel a sort of self-identification with those peoples of the Iron Age, which are also used by the regional government and the public agencies for promoting tourism, for example. 
Also, local companies use archaeological references related to the betones as a source of cultural labeling for business purposes. These two main aspects will explain the growing public interest for reenactment festivals in Spanish regions such as Avila, but for most of people involved, reenactments are mainly festive celebrations in which outstanding events from the past become alive in the present through different ways of performance. This way, historical and archaeological narratives constitute a sort of background sound, a sort of background sound for party. For this reason, uh, there will be people participating in these reenactments who will not pay attention to heritage or archaeological narratives in any other time in their lives. So, self self experience and performativity could be considered here as a unique opportunity for archaeologists in order to engage with them and disseminate our interpretations about the Iron Age and ancient cultural landscapes. The archaeological site of Ulaka is located in a rural area which suffers the population and a great decline in the primary sector. Tourism has emerged as an alternative economic activity and European structural funds have been allocated to raise these initiatives. In this context, the betones are used in marketing and cultural labeling as a local reference for identity. The Runa Celta Reenactment Festival started in 2005, one year after the last archaeological excavations at the cemetery of Ulaka by the Computation University uh, was developed. In the first three editions, the festival included the collaboration of various, uh, various archaeologists who explained different aspects of the Iron Age to the audience. However, since 2008, these archaeological lectures were replaced by folk Celtic music. Since then, the festival has not stopped to growing. The success of the Luna Celta reenactment has led to the launching of similar festival events in uh, nearby towns like uh, Lungasaz in near to La Mesa de Miranda, uh, the, the Celtic Festival of El Raso, or the Beton Festival in Yecla La Vieja in different villages around this area. But what do they do in the Luna Celta festival and these sort of uh, events? Local people and visitors dress themselves up like betones and represent historical events, mainly battles, ritual ceremonies, and you know, feasts, parades. Although they try to represent the past in a more accurate way they can, we should not forget that having fun uh, is the central aim for the most of them. So, in the 13 editions uh, of the festival, there were representation of combats, funeral, weddings, craft demonstrations, all sorts of activities like, like this. And complementary activities like games, archery, or climbing, uh, climbing uh, are also organized mainly for children. The central event in the festival is the Luna Celta Theater, uh, which is uh, deployed usually on Friday. The Nagman Festival starts on Friday night with this theater play uh, performed by local actors uh, on the Ulaka altar. Every year, the play is based on a different topic, and the script follows archaeological and historical information the, out the authors uh, gather from outreach books written by archaeologists, and also from the internet, Wikipedia, or all those kind of uh, places. The performance of this theater play generated controversy among archaeologists, since the majority of them saw their concern regarding the conservation and the, of the site and the integrity of the Ulaka altar itself. The last couple of years, the play in the top of Ulaka uh, brought around 3,000 people to the Iron Age Sopidon, uh, and these people have to walk uh, the steepest slopes of the Ulaka Hill for, for more than half an hour, and later they come down in the middle of the night. So you can imagine they are really interested in going there to, to watch this play. During the weekend, a big market is the focus of the festival in the village. It is formed by stalls full of regional products, jewelry, crafts, from leather to aromatic candles, and bars with chorizo and ham sandwiches and enough beer to keep well hydrated uh, the thousands of people who visit and take part in the reenactment. There is a regulation in the, for the market which states that the decoration of the stalls, the dresses of the sellers, and the music must be Celtic beton, not medieval. A tribe contest uh, has recently been launched, uh, aiming to reward the best reenactment groups and to encourage, local, to encourage local inhabitants to take part in their festival. Tribes are formed by families and groups of friends. For example, a Bertonia tribe is formed by 20, 21 people from the same village, Baterna. Different aspects are valued. The originality of their dresses and complements, uh, their active involvement on the festival through the weekend, and Sorry. the historical accuracy of their office and the short speech and a short speech they give to the public uh, at the main stage of the festival. 
as any other events, uh, political parties get involved in this festival. This way, the local mayor from the Labour Party is the main promoter of the festival and is always in the middle of everything in the festival. He's always at the front of, of any act during the rearrangement, so antagonism uh, between different parties uh, at local level rises. For example, because regional institutions in Avila are ruled uh, by the Conservative Party. So tricky, situ tricky situations came up when they meet at the festival, and uh, we, co we could saw this uh, last year in 2016. Then uh, the local and regional conservative politicians came on to, to, the, to the festival for a visit, and they, they tried to, to go up to the stage at the tribe contest uh, without being dressed up as betones against the will of local organizations who were really, really upset because uh, they could not allow to give full prominence to the local mayor wearing beton world office. You can see him like in the middle. He's the local mayor. <laughs> the festival has an important impact in the local and regional media. Television and newspapers cover the festivities celebrating the local Beton Pride and the happiness of the local inhabitants of Solo Sancho. Moreover, the festival has inspired a novel. Through performativity and embodiment, the participants of reenactments such as Luna Celta naturalize a variety of aspects on archaeological and historical narratives, and they disseminate them to the public. Moreover, these narratives are far more successful than most of our papers, exhibitions, or lectures. But most of our colleagues, the most significant concerns that arise uh, for most of our colleagues, the more significant concerns that, that arise at the light of historical reenactments can be encapsulated within a question of the sort. Are they wearing the right, the right type of sword? We wonder if this kind of aspects should be the main concern for archaeologists. Can we change our attitude and be more constructive? Mm -hmm. Certainly, at the Renagman festivals, we can, com we can approach audiences which couldn't ever be reached at museums or with other conventional outreach strategies. So instead of complaining about the inaccuracy in the use of certain type of swords or necklaces, we should learn from reenactments about successful strategies to make impact on the public and disseminate our archaeological narratives among, the, among lay audiences. Certainly, we can think about complementary conferences programs, but if people have to choose between several dozens of activities during the festival, including battles, feasting, having beer from animal horns, almost nobody will attend to a formal lecture. Actually, in the first editions of the Luna Celta, as I told you, uh, there were some lectures by archaeologists, but they were no longer organized since very few people attended. So we need to explore different ways to engage with people who are interested in Iron Age but prefer living, but prefer living it rather to listen to formal and boring top-down academic discourses. Usually, the pro-Roman communities of Central Iberia are represented at reenactment festivals such as Luna Celta in a hierarchical way. There are always indigenous leaders who are performed as a sort of powerful kings and they are accompanied by male warriors mainly. The indigenous peoples are always depicted as united, with no variations among them, farther uh, than different clothes or banners uh, for the different tribes who take part in the tribe's contest. So historical cultural view in Iron Age prevails here. Why is that if nowadays archaeological discussions are deepening into regional diversity with the later Iron Age societies in this area, and no hierarchical interpretations of Iron Age societies are gaining space within the academic debates? The new, but the thing is that the new academic narratives are more complex and they could enrich uh, to the public understanding of the Roman past. Also, and most importantly, they will enhance the multicultural reality of the present. We may recall here the recent controversy that social media, uh, following the support of Mary Bear to a, to a multicultural and multiracial Roman Britain. But probably, these recent narratives are not so easy to reach for the public in central Spain, for example, because sometimes they are written in English and they are published in fancy journals with high impact indexes, but they have too high access fees. Where the participants in Luna Celta collect the information they need to build up the bottom-up narratives to make a reenactment? At the contrary to academic narratives, New Age stories and pseudo-archaeology are perfectly accessible to them through the internet. So dozens of blogs, Facebook groups, and Twitter accounts spread amateur texts and images about the Celtic barbarian assemblage for, Celtal, for, for Central Iberian Iron Age. So, uh, and they, they use Wikipedia too, where really few academics uh, add information. Uh, we archaeologists should consider the need to get involved in these spaces for being part of the, cons of the conversation and point out new questions and sources. But let's go further. 
What if, we, what if we get involved in organizing reenactments and promote breakup, breakups and change in the cultural representations? We are not talking about imposing our academic views to the public. Instead, we suggest to go with the people and assume few responsibilities in the organization. For example, after years ago, a uh, few years ago, we tried to, to do something like this in the Festival of Asturias y Romanos in Astorga, uh, Pablo Alonso and myself. So we tried to, we proposed to some of our tribe mates, uh, the Giguros, racing up against the tyranny of Sebius, the leader of Asturias, in a small theater play in which someone will play an archaeologist's role as narrator. We thought about performing an assembly for proclaiming equality among the Giguros and the seas on the warrior male ideology that, that, that males were carrying on too far in the festival. The Roman threat may not justify an increase on inequalities within our community. This plan was already settled for being deployed in 2013 edition, but both of us had to move and we couldn't, we couldn't make it. But it will be interesting to see what happened there. So, we archaeologists can make the most of the resources already available at the reenactment festivals. The theater plays, the parades, and the market at Solo Sancho, so households, artisan activities, and the participants make and use all sorts of pre-Roman objects during the festival. What if we collaborate with them, organizing a guided tour speaking about the pre-Roman agrarian economy, the built environment, or the importance of households for the interpretation of gender and social inequalities? We are sure that few things will annoy us, such as looking at corn in the walls of their huts, biking, hemel biking helmets, or the Game of Thrones music all around. But if we get involved with a positive attitude, the public will consider that archaeology has something positive to provide them about Iron Age beyond commodified New Age discourses and pseudo-archaeology. The way people live and work in the land in the past made cultural landscapes as they are today, so this reflection is not present at Luna Celta, and we could be responsible to introduce it in the, in the picture. <coughs> so a few last conclusions uh, for, the, for the final discussion. What, we, what could we do as archaeologists in order to favor the public engagement with archaeological sites through historical reenactments? Since historical reenactments have historical and archaeological narratives behind, they sometimes are related to archaeological sites and they can affect in some ways to heritage management, these events constitute one of the themes in which public archaeology should pay more attention. Moreover, this increasing prominence of historical reenactments is making them become one of the main arenas for the dissemination of archaeological knowledge. So, if we want to study the public perceptions of Iron Age and consider how stakeholders engage with cultural landscapes and archaeological sites, we cannot miss uh, historical reenactments. It is fair to have some concerns on some of these festivals regarding the ideological motivations behind them or the commodification of heritage, but at the same time, reenactments constitute an interesting arena where different relations uh, between the academy and society uh, could be experimented. There are people who really want to hear uh, current discussions in archaeology with all their complexity, but most of the times these ideas are not available for them, since we don't write in academia or we don't write like understandable blogs on the internet. At the contrary, historical cultural archaeology and pseudo-narratives are easier to understand for the public and they can be found everywhere. So we need to do an effort on public outreach and an engagement with local communities because if we don't do it, somebody else will do it uh, with their own agenda. So, thank you very much.